Okay, hi everyone. I'm Chris Barden. I'm the Chief Software Architect for Computer Talk Technology, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about ICE Contact Center for Link and what we can do as a value add for a Link solution. Uh, so just a little bit of background on Computer Talk itself. Uh, we've been in the Contact Center business for about 25 years now. Um, kind of seen the evolution from the basic call center with uh, simple IVR to the true multimedia unified communications uh, contact center experiences we're looking at now, uh, bringing in channels like instant messaging and uh, email on top of voice, uh, also looking at you know, starting to see things like SMS to contact center, Twitter to contact center, so it's really just about being, being a true multi-channel experience. Um, the product we've got right now called ICE, uh, it works directly with Link, and it scales from about two to 600 agents right now. Uh, but the sweet spot's really between, been between about 30 and 200. So what we, uh, but what we, again, what we, what we offer is, uh, is both a, a cloud service and a CPE deployment. So in CPE scenarios, we will typically integrate with existing customer link deployments, uh, or legacy PBX systems or both. Uh, and in the cloud, in, in the cloud space, uh, up till now we've been We've been pretty much playing with existing customer PBX deployments or Centrix deployments. Uh, more recently, we've we've gotten into the into into the uh, hosted link space though. So we've got we're offering both contact contact center and link as a as a cloud service. Uh, and we've been working with this this stuff for quite a long time. You know, starting with the with the back with speech server, uh, but then through LCS OCS and uh, Link 2010 and actually Link 2013 now. So we've. Uh, I've got a lot of knowledge about how this uh, how the solution works. Um, as far as how how ICE actually integrates into the Link landscape, it's a uh, it's it's provisioned as a, as a Link application. So we exist as part of the Link topology. We're UCMA based solutions. So we actually. Uh, you know, we're, we're actually only really, we're using all, we're basically relying on Link for all of the voice routing, all of the, uh, you know, UCMA is, is our, is our speech rec engine, is our text to speech engine, is our, is our media engine. Uh, but the way we interact with that is a little, little unique, and I'll show you that, I'll show you that in a few minutes. Um, so the first thing I want to show, want to, want to point out is this toolbar that's across the top of my screen. Uh, it's something we call IceBar, and it's there to allow agents to control their state on the contact center to be able to view things like queue stats. Uh, so you can see here over at the right, I've got a, uh, I've got a summary that, you know, this agent's in a not written, an available state for the contact center. Uh, there's no calls in queue. They've handled three calls today. And just some just some summary stats. If I want more detail, they could, the agents can actually drill in and see something like this that shows you uh, and more, you know, more detailed queue stats, uh, but it allows them to do things like log in and out of queue, so I can see where where I am if I want to be able to pull myself off of, say, the you know, you know an airline queue. I can do that, um, but it's really to to give the agents uh, contact center state control uh, stats, call control, um, but then for all the media transactions that they do, uh, so taking voice calls, taking IMs, they're using link. And you can see here actually even the, the, contact, the state for the contact center is synchronized with the link state. So again, when we place a voice call to an agent, we place a voice call to their link endpoint, which if they happen to be outside of, outside of, the, of the network, will go through an edge server. If they happen to have simultaneous ring enabled, will go to their cell phone. Um, so it really gives us the flexibility to be able to have agents anywhere they happen to happen to be on link. Uh, if the agent wants to use something that's not their link client, we also support that. So I can actually log in directly to ICE using my cell phone. But again, that call, that outbound call is going to be placed through the link infrastructure. So all of the configuration for, uh, for routing and for gateways is all familiar to existing link administrators and link, existing link deployments. So what I'm going to show you to start with is uh, our, some, what we've done with, uh, with instant messaging. Uh, we're seeing a lot more people asking for a web chat and instant messaging in the uh, in the contact center space. So what we've done is we've actually leveraged Link I I M to be able to deliver a web chat solution. So what we have what I have on ICE is I have I have an I'll have an endpoint. For instance, we look for computer talk here. This is actually an an endpoint that is an ICE server and is published, I can IM this directly through Link, but what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to send it an IM over the web. So what we've built is we've built a, uh, built a click to chat service that I can launch if I click this live chat button here. So what I'm going to see is this is, this is, this is, this is a control that we can, we can embed on somebody else's website. This is, the, this is a customer demo that we've done. But what I'll do is I'm going to pull up, uh, just enter a name on here. And 
Okay. So what I can do is this, this control that I'm showing you here, this chat window, is something that we built and that we have we can we can embed on anybody's website. So uh, the only modification the customer is going to have to do is put that live chat button on there. Uh, we've got web services that you can make that context sensitive. So time based on time of day, based on number of agents available, uh, you can say the you know, put the approximate wait time for for that right on your website. But what we're doing here is just a simple. Um, Simple I am. And what, what I can see right now is I'm actually getting a response back even though I'm not connected to an agent yet. And this is actually what we talk about is it's, it's like an I am IVR. So what, we're, what, you're, what it's doing is it's actually saying, you know, welcome to the property search if you need you know a listing ID. So what I can do is just pop over here and grab a listing ID that I know. And this happens to be for a real estate company. So I can get right away, right, get back right away. Okay, this is the property I'm looking at. Uh, you know, do I want to stand by for a representative? Yes. So now I'm in, now I'm in queue, and actually, if I look up here, I can see that this just flipped on ice bar. That I've got a contact in uh, in an assigned queue that's waiting. So what I can do right now is, if I make this agent available, let's just do it, do that through link. And what's going to happen now is that this agent is going to get a uh, get a, is going to get the IM pop up. I logged out of that queue. So what happens right now is this agent gets the IM pop-up, and what you what you can see right now is I've actually got both sides of the conversation on the same screen. But a lot of things happened right right away. So what I've got here is I've got the uh, you know this window here is the the, the web web user is going to see see what they're connected to. They're going to see they're connected to a support representative. Here's my name, uh, and the agent is going to get 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 this this link window and they've got the entire history of that conversation conversation here I know what their email address is what their phone number is uh, what the what, what property ID they looked for so I've, I've got that information in the IM tra transcript but then I've also got a screen pop of the actual listing from from the web that was passed down by the ice server and the way that works is that's a scriptable interface that uh, ice bar provides so we have this tool on every agent desktop and what that allows us to do is write a phoebe script or a javascript that can run on uh, on different events and in this case i happen to say okay when i get an incoming call uh look at the the data that we attach to that which happens to be the listing id go off to the web Open the open the page that has the has the listing. That way, the agent has that right that information right at their fingertips when the when the caller comes in. Uh, we also do this for various custom custom things, but the common ones seem to be uh, SharePoint knowledge bases are common. Uh, Dynamic CRM screen pop is common, uh, and we have some kind of CAN modules that we can use for use for those to be able to do things like create CRM records. Um, so what I can do is you know I can actually talk you know talk back and forth and. I see that I can oh, I can open up IM, but what this has done is it's let me have uh, a click to IM scenario uh, from the web. Now, because this is a web client, I'm not actually able to do voice in it yet. Uh, but what I can do is I could do uh, you know I can say a request a callback. You know that's going to give basically pop. This is a clickable link here, and now I can could you know the edge you could click that and start an IM uh, a voice conversation out of band. Now, if you do link to link, so for say an internal help desk scenario. Uh, what you would get, be able to do in the same same case is I could start a conversation with my contact center over IM, but then elevate that to voice and elevate that to video all within link. So when both ends are on link, it's a very powerful scenario. And what what's interesting is that this 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 does all work through through, feder through federation. So you can imagine a scenario where you're serving your customers with uh, a nice contact center on your link deployment. You're federated with your customers, and now they're able to contact your con get into your contact center and use richer interaction methods than they ever had before. So that's something that's 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 pretty unique. Now, the other things, uh, show you a couple other tools while while I'm in here. Uh, first, I'm going to show you the uh, supervisor monitoring interface. Uh, so this is something that we use for for real time monitoring on the contact center. Uh, you can see here that I'm logged in as a as an administrator, so I can see all the agents that are that are associated with that. They've got some, you know, they've got some data here. So at a, at a very high level, I can get a view of every agent in the system. I can do the same thing for all the different queues. So I know, you know for instance, there's eight users assigned here. Um, you know, one user ready in that queue. If I want to drill in and see more information, I can drill into the queue, get some more, get some more stats. Uh, if I want to go back over and take a look at a particular user, you know, I can do that. Um, 
you know, I can get so I've got some uh, I've got some high level stats here. I can see the cues uh, cues that she's assigned to, teams that she's assigned to. Um, I can look at look at some graphs. So if I want to see her state, or if I want to get you know want that to be bigger, I can flip through flip through and see you know, see some more information about you know what 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 they've been doing all day. Uh, but the the idea with this interface is to be able to give you a, a nice real time high level view. Everything is going to update uh, update in real time, and what we're going to be able to do here is see basically the health the health of your contact center, and that uh, you know supervisors tend to leave this kind of thing up if. Uh, you know, we've also seen, had customers who want to leave this up as a wallboard, so you can either leave, you know, a particular view like this, or more typically, you might, you know, you might just want to show one graph, uh, or you can actually go and create a custom dashboard with any of these elements that I showed you, and define a define a view that is going to be uh, be what you see when you log in. So you could see how how I might have, uh, you know, LCD monitors on, you know, big 50-inch TVs on the wall that I want to be able to show that show something like this all the time. Uh, so that's what uh, that's that's one of the things that this tool enables. Um, you know, also able to very easily see if, for instance, if I want to see what uh, you know, you want to see all users that match a particular condition. So I can look by state. I can look for you know, look for search for particular users. You know, it's very easy to find the information you want and drill into the uh, the data you're interested in. So that's that, that's our, that's our real-time monitoring interface, Silverlight application that runs in a browser. So it's it's got it's reachable anywhere anywhere you need to need it to be, and it uh, you know, all the communications over over the web, so it's all secure all all secure at all HTTP, so we don't have to worry about firewalls anymore, and we don't have to worry about uh, having to install something on the desktop. Uh, so the other tool I'm going to show you is probably the most exciting one, and that is our administrator tool. So this this tool, uh, first of all, has the ability to define. That's where you define all your users. So I've got a user here that I'm going to. You know, you define you know define their level, define how you how we how we actually reach them. So that's the the default number we dial out to them on. Uh, we have lots of options for how agents behave. So, you know, whether or not they're able to handle more, one or more IMs at once, uh, whether or not they you know what state they log into, what we send to the PB send to the PSDN, whether we hide their their information, all that all that kind of thing. Um, and then you're it's also where you're you're able to define your queues. So again. Define, define a queue, add agents to the queue, uh, define what your targets for that queue are. So if you want an average speed of answer, uh, you know, all sorts of different different settings you're able, you're able to do on that. And then teams are just there as, as they're, they're a logical grouping. So we have the idea of a team lead role and a team member. So if you wanted to group agents into, in, into, into management groups or into um, just groups for reporting, then we're, we're, we, we do that as well. Um, skills-based routing is, a, is, a, is another option, so you kind of got the choice of doing queue-based routing, skills-based routing, or both. Um, and then when you're actually connecting up to link, you're actually defining what uh, what we're referring to as a UC group, the Unified Communications Address. Uh, and these addresses are, are directly... Um, are directly registered on links. So the, you know, if I if I if I'm able to if I have a link endpoint, I can contact these addresses directly. But again, if I wanted to write to that through through a PSDN connection, then I write to that the same way I write to an existing link user. Uh, you know, just defining the routing and link, defining the line URI for the user, and I'm set. Um, but what's it, what's interesting here is so you can see on this on this group, I've got I've got a terminus for uh, AV and a terminus for IM. So that basically tells me that I've got a workflow here, which is our call flow designer, and I'm handling both uh, both modalities for for that on the same address. So calling that address is, uh, through link or through the PSDN is going to go through go to the voice the voice endpoint. Sending an IM is going to go to the IM, IM endpoint. So what I've got here is a uh, a simple call flow, and what 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 you can see is here. I've got a wait for incoming call here. I've got a wait for instant message here. I've got a wait for email. Uh, it's all on the same page. If you look at these, they're actually all going to the same queue. So it's uh, it's a drag and drop tool. So I can I can really just go in and say that I want to insert uh, insert new actions. Like say I want to do something like call a web service in here. So I could put this you know put a new action in here, call a web service, give it a URI, and all of a sudden you know, and I'm adding. You know, very rich program program programmability to uh, to an IVR call flow. Um, speech record text to speech are all built built right in, so I can just I, I can you know define define a text to speech action you know simply using this this uh, this speak action. And what's what's interesting about the about this this interface is that any changes that I make. So if I were to go through, for instance, and, and change this. 
you know, if I if I if I make a change on that and hit save up here, as soon as I save that, that change is going to be live. So that change is now live on on the contact center. Uh, the next call into that is going to get the new treatment, uh, which is really powerful because I didn't actually have to go through and uh, and stage anything. I didn't have to go to, to go deploy anything. Didn't have to compile anything. It's all taken care of. It's all published. It's all edited live. So that gives us the, gives the advantage to uh, supervisors and business users because they're able to go in and make make changes. Not only could can they do their development from the start using this interface because it is reasonably simple to go in go in and start from scratch. But having an existing application there, um, so your your IVR your IVR is already set up to be able to go in and make changes to that is fairly simple. So if you have um, if you have a case that you want to change your broadcast announcement or your initial announcement on your, your your contact center, or you wanted to change the routing to a different queue for for overflow, you could go in and make a change to the workflow and commit that right away, and that's all that's all done automatically. Uh, as as for as for how this actually works on, on uh, behind the scenes, this is all actually using the UCMA core APIs. So um, what we're actually doing is we've got a lay, our workflow layer sits on top of on, on top of that and actually is is interpreted as uh, core UCMA actions by our by our software. So we're not we're not suffering any. Uh, we're not we're not taking a performance hit on, on on that happening, but we are able to offer that that rich editor experience that uh, that we think is pretty unique. And I, as far as actions you can do, again, you can see, you know, I've got basic basic telephony actions here, but then I've got things like like calling web services, like calling external code, like calling you know dipping into a database to be able to pull information. So those connection points that we we offer are really going to be able to give you a a lot of access to you know business information. So, like the demo that I showed you, being able to pull that property information and reply an instant message with that information out of the database uh, in a few mouse clicks. So, workflow workflow is really cool. That's something that uh, that really set, sets us apart on that. So the other thing I can show you here is our our reporting interface. So this is where we where we store all the historical report on all the historical data we gather on the contact center. So what I can show you here is that we've got We've got user reports and contact reports and queue reports, so we can we can get you a lot of information about what actually what actually happened. And if I want to go through and be able to be able to change stuff, you know, I can look at a particular user. Uh, so this is this is going to give me information about, uh, you know, say, I only care about you know one or two users. I could do that. You know, start pull, start pulling this. I can I can go go and preview that and see a PDF of what that report's going to look like. Uh, I can schedule it to be able to run on a run in an inter interval, or I can have it. Uh, they're going to have it emailed emailed out automatically. So there's really there's a lot of a lot of data that we're we're collecting that we're we're, we're able to provide a lot of uh, standard reports on. And it's actually the the schema for that is published such that we can we can have we can have customers write write custom reports if they want if there's data that they want to be able to pull in from multiple sources. Uh, either customers can do that or we'll actually do that as a as a professional services take uh, if if that's something that, that people are looking for. But uh, as a standard reporting package, you know we're reporting on basically everything that happens once that call uh, hits the system and, until it until it's finished. And that includes things like you know agent disposi agent dispositioning calls. Uh, you know what happened. What happened in the IVR? How long? Um, how long your calls went on for? And even uh, things like a post-call survey. Uh, so once the once the caller hangs up, you know to be able to transfer them back into a different application to be able to to take a take a short survey after a call is done. So that's about all I wanted to uh, wanted to show you today. So we've got the uh, you know we've got the agent tool, we've got the reporting tool, we've got the uh, we got the workflow, and, and, and we've got the, the administration and workflow designer. Um, so, if you would like more information, please visit our website, uh, computertalk.com. Uh, we've got more demo videos up there. We've got more documentation on what we do. Uh, and if you'd like to contact us directly to arrange for a demo or to see if you have specific uh, questions about what you've seen today, uh, please do so. All right, thanks.